Hi, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us today. Um, so we're still one minute early. So while we're waiting for people to join, why don't you share with us in the chat box uh, where you're joining us from? We'd love to know where you're coming from. Okay, I see we have Angie from Arizona. <laughs> Hi, Angie, welcome. <laughs> Your first day. Uh, Samantha from Africa. Hi, Samantha. So I see that more and more people are joining the webinar and hopping on this Zoom. So I just want to welcome everyone. Thank you so much for taking your taking the time to join us today. And I would love for you to just write uh, to, just in the chat where you're coming from. Where are you joining us from today? I see we have people from Africa, from the US. Kaelan, I hope, uh, from Ireland. Hi, great to see you. So we're going to just wait a couple more minutes, uh, let people or being held up elsewhere, join us, just so they won't miss the beginning. But I want to welcome everybody again uh, to CodeMonkey's quarterly webinar, exclusive webinar for teachers. Uh, and if you just hop in, uh, Therese, like Teresa from New Hampshire, we would love to hear where you're joining us from. Okay, so just one more minute and we will get going.
All right. So thank you so much for uh, joining us today. We really appreciate you taking the time to share with us uh, this 45 minutes. We're, we're going to try to cover as much as possible from the CodeMonkey platform. Uh, we know you're joining us from around the world. Uh, and the, I want to thank you on behalf of not only myself, but the CodeMonkey team. Uh, we know that your time is limited, so we really appreciate uh, you for joining us today. Um, so our goal today would be to, to, get, to get you what you need uh, from this webinar today, so you can hit, hit the ground running when, when you start teaching. Um, so you might be looking uh, to learn a little bit more about the platform. You might want to get more familiarized with the platform. And mainly, we want to be able to hear from you uh, also on this webinar. Um, so we're going to give you the opportunity at the end of the webinar. We're going to hand over the mic and let you ask us some questions uh, live. So we won't be able to answer everyone's questions, of course, but I do hope that the answers to the questions that we are able to answer today uh, for some will also help others. So if you don't get your answer during this session, uh, you can always just reach out to us via email or, you, or using the chat box and the Q&A box right here in this uh, Zoom uh, webinar. And also I will show you how you can contact us uh, while you're on the platform. So again, welcome everyone. Today is the quarterly, quarterly webinar for teachers. And I really like to think about it as sort of an open office hours because it's really designed to answer your questions. And then we're just here to prepare, to prepare you for the classroom, show you some features, and we really love seeing everyone, uh, all of you here. So uh, just so you can, just so you know, you can always follow us at codemonkey.stu on our Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, and also on LinkedIn. Uh, and then uh, we also have our Code Mon Code Monkey blog. Uh, so I would recommend following that as well. Uh, there's a lot of tips and tricks for teachers over there. Uh, sometimes we'll just share some different content, so we can dive into that later. Um, but uh, if you guys like to check out any of our social platforms, then uh, that would be great. Um, you're also able to ask uh, if you have any questions that weren't answered during this webinar today, then you're able to ask them through any of those uh, platforms. So let's take a second to meet the team. Uh, so I'm Maya, uh, Maya Miller. I'm the customer success manager. What I do is I help uh, teachers, schools, districts, uh, and our uh, partners to uh, onboard to CodeMonkey, impl implement them and reach their goals uh, throughout the school year. I talk to a lot of teachers throughout my, that's part of my daily routine. And I get a lot of really interesting tips and tricks, some of which I'm gonna share from you, uh, share with you today. Not all of those tips and tricks are necessarily things that we thought of when uh, we created the platform. So it's always great to get feedback from you on how you use the platform eventually in your classroom. We also have, uh, um, uh, Livnat Hershkovitz here today. She is the content developer and pedagogy manager. And she is actually the one that works her magic and creates all of CodeMonkey. So pretty amazing. And Molly, uh, would you like to present yourself or? Okay. I don't know if she's able to, but I will say Molly is our director of sales. Uh, some of you may know her. So, uh, so our 
objectives today in this webinar is to um, show you how you can access the classroom and how your students can access the classroom, how you can create the classroom for them, and how to add co-teachers, how to limit students' progress and also how to track it. And I will show you the lessons feature and the gradebook and proficiency reports. And we'll also have a Q&A in the end. So just a little something that I like to say is that I see the CodeMonkey uh, platform in a way, sort of like a restaurant, right? Because uh, when you go to a restaurant, the, thirst, the first thing that you would do is take your customers and take them to their table. This is basically the student access and getting the students into the classrooms. And then you have to cater them with some sort of service. And, and you're also, you're, you're able to do it yourself as a teacher or add a co-teacher. Catering them with the service is just like uh, showing them the um, sharing with them the content the community has. So allowing them to pay and, and limit their progress. And then afterwards, after the food is served, then you would ask, "How was the food? Was it good?" You would see if they ate everything on their plate or not. This is part of the um, progress tracking that I will share with you today. So for me, it's just like a kind of cute way to remember uh, things. I hope it helps you too. Um, so just in general, uh, I'm gonna cover this really briefly. So CoMonkey is a leading, fun, and intuitive curriculum for kids to learn coding uh, through the game and project-based courses. Students as young as seven use real programming languages to solve puzzles and build games and apps. So the majority of CodeMonkey's courses do not require prior coding experience uh, in order to teach them, which is amazing. It's a very, very teacher-friendly platform. And all of the courses are designed for school, extracurricular, and home use. So our, our mission, I would say, is to provide an inclusive path for youngsters into the ever-expanding world of code. Um, CodeMonkey is a game-based learning environment where children learn to code in real programming languages. Ever since CodeMonkey, um, so you are, uh, you will be able to find this webinar and also many other webinars that are uh, um, teacher and student geared uh, right here. If you follow this link www.comonkey.com uh, dash webinars. Uh, so this, once we finish, once we end this webinar today, we will be sending you a feedback survey, uh, which will also have a link to this webinar. And about a week uh, after, I believe that we will already have this webinar uh, on site. So let's dive in directly to the platform. <clears throat> or you know what? Uh, let's start here. Can you see the login screen right now? I want to make sure. No, we see the courses page, Maya. Okay, so let me just turn the login screen. Okay. So this is the CodeMonkey login screen. This is where you would probably start your way with CodeMonkey. Uh, we recommend using one of the SSOs. If you're using uh, CodeMonkey with Google Classroom, then you would go with the Google SSO. If you're using it with Clever, then you would use uh, the Clever SSO. And this is uh, just the main uh, thing. And once you do log in, this is the page that you will see. Uh, you will get to the courses page. This is a teacher account that I created uh, specially for this webinar, but this is, uh, what's unique about this page is that the students and the teachers, it gives us, uh, they have the same, main page. So you 
as a teacher, you're seeing this and you're also able to play the courses, but this, you're also seeing Code Monkey the way that your students will see Code Monkey. Uh, <clears throat> okay, so on the courses page, you, uh, you can see that the courses are tagged by colors. Uh, there is novice, beginner, intermediate, adv and advanced courses. Uh, each course uh, would be suitable for a different stage or a different grade. And uh, you can also see when you click on a certain course, an explanation. I mean, A, you can see the name of the course, B, whether it was started or not, and then an explanation about what they would see in this course. Uh, so when a student logs in for the first time, they would see here, start coding, but once they have uh, played their first challenge, then it will turn into continue coding. And when they click it, it will take them exactly to the point where they stopped last. Okay, so on the left hand, you can see that you have this menu that will help you to navigate throughout the platform. And you also have another menu on the right hand that will take you to, it uh, will be able to uh, change language from there. You can go to your classrooms, which is this page that we're on right now. And you can go to your account to change account settings. And you're also able to go to the help center or blog and contact us through this uh, right-hand menu. So under my classrooms, uh, you can, you once you uh, populate your subscription with classrooms, then you will be able to see the classroom list. It also provides you with uh, a summary of this, like a, an overview summary of this, where, where your subscription stands, uh, like student population wise. So we can see that this subscription has five classrooms. Among all those classrooms, there's 36 students. Some of the classrooms are populated and some aren't. Uh, you can see which subscription it, it's associated with. You can see that one classroom is associated with a subscription that has been expired. This uh, I will show you later. I want to use this to show you how we move from year to year uh, in CodeMonkey. Uh, a class code is one of the ways uh, that you can invite students into your classroom. And from this My Classrooms page, you're able to edit the classroom name and the classroom grade as a teacher. Uh, you are also able to archive classrooms. So that's just by, by clicking the archive button here. So let's just click archive uh, and it will not archive immediately. It will make sure that you are, that you're sure. And then once I have archived it, let's say I archived the classroom by mistake or I wanted to archive just one student from that classroom and not the whole classroom. I know this is a repeating question that we get uh, once in a while. So you can, on the same page uh, as uh, the classroom list, there's also the archive and you can easily restore the classroom by just clicking restore classroom. Okay. okay. So when, your first step with CodeMonkey would be to create a new classroom, right? So we have several ways that you can create a classroom with. You can create a classroom just name it here and associate it with the subscription. The teacher trial uh, is, some of you may have uh, wanted to dab around CodeMonkey, so you had a teacher trial before, so make sure that you're adding the classroom to the correct uh, and active subscription. And another way that you can create uh, a classroom is import from Google. 
So right now I am not connected to my Google Classroom account, but if I was, then it would, once I choose the checkbox import from Google, then a drop down menu will appear here and it will show me all of the classrooms that are um, classrooms that I manage with Google. And the important thing to notice is uh, just make sure that your login email to CodeMonkey is the same as your login email to your um, Google Classroom. And then you Hi, Maya, just yeah. just one comment. You, um, if you log in with Clever, it will say import from Clever, and right, will import all your classes from Clever. Okay, that's that's correct. Thank you, Livnat. And once classrooms are uh, imported from either Clever or Google, when we get into the specific classroom, there will be an icon here right below the drop down menu that enables you to navigate between classrooms easily without having to go back to the My Classrooms page. So there will be a, um, a button here that's like with the branding of either Google or uh, Clever. And once you click that button, it will automatically sync uh, the classroom with whatever um, students or changes that you had on your Google or whatever classroom. <clears throat> so by clicking, by choosing a classroom, I, it will take, actually, sorry, I wanted to take convention coding. Okay, so once you chose a classroom, you we move from the like the main hall of the teacher dashboard to the to the dashboard of the specific classroom. On the dashboard of the specific classroom, we have those tabs, and each tab has a world of possibilities. And again, the drop down menu is always here on the top right hand side. You can um, change classroom easily. Uh, you don't have to go back to the My Classrooms every time because we know it can be uh, exhausting. <laughs> so <clears throat> once you chose uh, the specific classroom, we get to the progress tab. On the progress tab, we're able to um, monitor and control the progress of our students. Uh, so I can, so currently we're looking at the Coding Adventure Part 1 course of this classroom. You can see uh, the names of the students, and we are a you're able to sort in a way that you're most comfortable. So you can either sort by name, like it is sorted right now, from uh, by display name, or by progress. And then it will show you uh, the mo the ones who made the most progress at the top, and then going down to those who have less progress. Um, the the star system, uh, as you can see here in the, uh, on the top, a yellow star means three stars. This means that the student was able to solve uh, the, the challenge in the best, most elegant and shortest way. Uh, a blue star means that he, he um, submitted a two-star solution, which means that they uh, were able to reach the bananas, but maybe there was like a step that was making it uh, that could have been uh, saved. And one star means uh, that, they, that they have struggled with this. Um, an exclamation mark means a failed solution. So they weren't able to solve the challenge at all. And assessment challenges, this is actually, ah, uh, okay. <laughs> first book, uh, I wanted to show you that we currently, we currently have assessment challenges here marked as uh, with a yellow circle, but we are working on special assessment challenges that would be separated from this, which is something that I know a lot of teachers are really excited about. Um, so on the progress table, you're also able to limit progress, as you can see here. Uh, this classroom's progress was limited until uh, to challenge 24, the uh, one of the assessment challenges. It's 
it's a choice. You can limit by course, you can limit by assessment challenges. And, and from the <clears throat> progress table, you're also able to turn on, turn on and off super hints for your students. If you feel that your students are struggling, for example, if we see, uh, hi, Joanne. <laughs> so if we see that uh, this is a great visual indication to see if our students struggled in a certain point. So if I would see several students have blue or red stars in a certain challenge, then I know maybe it's time to turn on super hints for them. Or maybe I want to revisit that challenge and see why they were struggling. Um, okay. Wait, so I think I jumped a little bit ahead. I also wanted to, uh, before we jump into the classroom, I wanted to say that if you are not importing with Google Classroom or Clever or whatever uh, pre-made pre uh, classroom, then once you've created a classroom, uh, let's go to one of my empty classrooms. Okay. This things always tend to happen when you're in a webinar. <laughs> Sometimes uh, one class wouldn't work. Let's see if this works. No. Okay. So if this classroom wasn't populated, then we would not see the list of the students, uh, which means that we need to add students. So once you click the plus and add, and add students, it, the pop-up window, uh, uh, and you will be able to add a single account or create multiple accounts. Uh, a single account is pretty obvious, display name, username, password. Uh, create multiple accounts. So to do that, you would need to download the example file and afterwards uh, re pop, um, enter the info into that example file. There are examples on the file, so you won't have to um, imagine uh, how you have to fill this CSV and then upload that CSV into the platform. And once you've uploaded it, then uh, the students will be populated in the classroom. And uh, you're getting a first look. This is the first webinar where we're presenting this. So it's exciting. Uh, you are also able to uh, share a class code with your students. Uh, a class code means, so for example, the classroom called Adventures in Coding has this unique class code that I can refresh and change um, by clicking the regenerate uh, button. So by sharing a class code, I can restrict uh, or limit uh, how students will join because I know that some of the pre-readers, but mainly pre-readers, but not only, uh, could sometimes get confused because you rem remember the login screen that I showed you at first. So there are many SSO systems. So if you choose, for example, Google or Clever or Classlink or whatever, <laughs> then it will present to those students only that option and it will prevent them from getting confused while they are um, log signing in for the first time. Uh, so once you shared the class code with the students, they will, you're basically um, passing on that process to them. You have shared the class code with them and now they have to just click the link that you have shared with them and uh, populate themselves into the classroom. Uh, when can you change this after the code was already made? So again, if you, even if the, if, for example, you're actually seeing the uh, perfect example right now, this is a classroom which is already populated, but I can still regenerate the class code again and again, uh, endlessly, I think, if I'm not mistaken. So you're always able to change the classroom uh, code. And if by any chance, uh, the classroom code reached a student that is not meant to be in this classroom, 
then you're always able to move this student to a different classroom. The thing is that you're only able to move students within classrooms in your subscription. And if I'm not mistaken, only classrooms that you manage. Uh, so, <clears throat> uh, and another great feature is the student login cards right here at the top. Uh, uh, so the student, student login cards are basically just uh, individual cards per student that have their name and their, just their credentials, their login information. This is really helpful if you're teaching uh, a hybrid model or if you're teaching um, uh, remotely. Uh, you can, I, it does create a little bit work for the teacher because after you printed the login cards, you have to share them with a specific student. So it would either be print and cut or, um, screenshot and share, uh, but it does really help a lot of students log in correctly. And that saves a lot of, a lot of work later on. Okay, so let's move on to <clears throat> the next tab. On the courses tab, you're able to see uh, the, the same courses as we saw here, but now we're seeing them with uh, a little bit more information. So we see which grades this course uh, is suitable for, how many lesson plans it has, and what um, device it would work best on. Uh, from the courses page, you're able to assign or unassign courses from the classroom. So I would assign by clicking it, and it becomes yellow, which means assigned. And to unassign, I just click the arrow and unassign, pretty intuitive. And for every course, if you click the read more, it will give you an explanation on what are the coding concepts that are uh, covered in this lesson. And you have a link here that would take you to the lesson plan. I it, the lesson plans are, let's let, just give it a second to load. So the lesson plans is a presentation, a pre-made presentation by, uh, by Lignat uh, <clears throat> that will help you teach the course in the classroom. So you, we basically did all the work and you can just rip, uh, rip up the fruits <laughs> by using this presentation when you use uh, uh, in front of the, the students, when you use CodeMonkey in the classrooms or in Zoom, you can share your screen. Uh, and now, is there anything else I want to say? Um, and again, you can see that it's color coded by uh, how, how how difficult uh, the the course is. <clears throat> so on the grade book, the grade book is another pretty great feature. Uh, so on the gradebook, you are able to see some data about, uh, about your specific classroom in a specific course. You're able to navigate between courses here and between classrooms here. Uh, you will be able to see uh, the, the, the star uh, the star system translated into numbers from one to 10. And it's uh, like uh, just grading them and you're able to change it from numbers to letters or to percent. Uh, so the percent is <clears throat> how, uh, how, how successful were they in uh, completing this uh, course. Uh, and you're also able to choose if you want to see the overall grade for a different, okay, this class hasn't covered all of that, but uh, you're able to change the, um, the concept. And uh, this uh, chart is also export. If you click export, it would download uh, as a, it would be downloaded uh, to your computer. Uh, you can download certificates from here, which is a great way uh, to 
uh, ramp up the excitement in the classroom. So once you finished uh, coding adventure part one, you can download certificates and the certificates would be done, would be, uh, let's show you what they would look like. So the certificates uh, would be um, downloaded into your computer with the name of the student imprinted in the same font as CodeMonkey. And let's see if I can see it here. Okay, so let's see one certificate. So this is an example for a certificate. If you download it through the teacher resources, then it's without a name. But if you download it with the teacher resources, so it will include an issue date, student name, uh, and the signature of the founder of CodeMonkey. <clears throat> so, Before we move on to the teacher resources officially, I just wanted to show you briefly the showroom. The showroom is where you would be able to see uh, games that were created by your students. And once you, once you reach the point where the students are using the, uh, the more advanced CodeMonkey courses, and on showroom, you're also able to enable or disable the discover. So once right now the discovery is in, enabled, so that's why it says the button says disable discover. And once I click it, it says uh, that it will hide uh, the discover from my students. I really recommend uh, maybe disabling discover for the first uh for the first month at least uh it's just it's a personal recommendation it's not an official recommendation from code monkey but uh, i think the discover is a really uh, students could, could get distracted by it and instead of doing the assigned courses then they might move to the discover so i would recommend once you have <clears throat> once you have created a classroom, added students, and then assigned courses, the next step, I think, would be to disable Discover and then enable it as you go on, but it's at your, dis at your discretion. So when we, let's move on to the teacher resources. <clears throat> so under the teacher resources, uh, you have always available the webinars. This webinar also is going to be on the webinar page. So whenever you want to revisit anything, you can do it from here. You can see uh, the lesson plans. Uh, on the, so the, the teacher resources would be obviously where you get all of your resources and the resources are uh, directed for online activities, offline activities and preparation for the classroom. So. If you're interested in preparation for the classroom, then I would recommend looking at the lesson plans that are available for CodeMonkey Junior, for Beaver Achiever, for Coding Adventure, Game Builder, Banana Tales, Coding Chat, as Math, and Challenge Builder. And also for the preparation for classroom, you can uh, check out the very cool new feature, Coding Concepts. It's relevant only for coding adventure, uh, and, but you're able to see brief uh, videos that you are also, did, I would recommend showing in the classroom uh, later on and uh, uh, that will explain the specific coding concepts that will be taught in that course. If you're interested in offline uh, and one more preparation for the classroom, you can see the solutions for every challenge in every course in CodeMonkey. All of the solutions are here. All you need to do is click the, the link in the correct course, and then it will show you the, the most eloquent way to solve the challenge. And this is what you would be um, directing your classroom towards. And if you're interested in offline activities, then we have the media and graphics. Uh, you can find certificates here. You can find uh, coloring pages and posters. You can print uh, 
and hang in the classroom. And What else did I want to say? And if you click the teaching with coding adventure, then it would take you a second. There's a lot of windows open right now and I'm presenting my screen, so it may take a second. Okay, great. So it will take you to the teaching with coding page, which has a lot of information about the, um, about the different uh, coding concepts that are covered and also a course overview and brief introduction to the platform. Uh, so before I, I know, I do wanna respect everyone's time and I know that the webinar is due to finish in a couple of minutes. So I just want to uh, briefly review uh, where you can access the help center. So you, the help center logo is always here on the left, in the bottom left hand. You're also able to contact us again, uh, as I mentioned at the beginning, through here. Uh, and and uh, okay. let's just see the help center structure for a minute, because uh, I want you to be able to find your way uh, once you use it for the first time. So the help center is divided uh, by <clears throat> articles for teachers, articles for admins, uh, articles for teachers and admins. So this would be things relating to classroom, uh, classroom dashboard management, articles for students, which is basically uh, um, text explanations on how to log in as a student, and then frequently asked questions and dive deeper articles about uh, the courses. Mm. And, okay, so let's, let's do a brief Q&A before we finish. So I see that we have one question from Jennifer. Hi, Jennifer. Let me just read it for a second. Okay, because it says, sorry for all that. Maya, I, okay. will, um, I will check the help center and we'll get back to Jennifer with the, with the issue. It, it, it means that they, instead of using the class code, they try to sign up. Maybe there weren't enough seats on your... Um, account so they couldn't join with the class code or maybe they entered the wrong class code so they try to sign up as students and then they had to enter their age and if their age is 13 or less which i assume it is then they get this message that they are not um old enough to join so but i will check the your um um your uh, conversation uh, on the help desk and now on the support and the, i will get back to you right after this webinar thank you Lisa. jennifer says thank you as well if anybody has any questions then if you could please either raise your hand or write them in the chat Let's give people a second to write something if they need to. <clears throat> okay, so if nobody has uh, any further questions, then I think uh, we can wrap this webinar up and I'll just remind everybody that this webinar uh, was recorded and it will be, will be live on our website uh, within a week or so. You will be able to access it through the teacher resources. Uh, let's just show you through the teacher resources. If you click the visit webinar page, you're also able to find on the webinar page a lot of uh, um, previously recorded webinars that are 
uh, dealing with either specific subjects or general uh, getting started with teacher uh, getting started with code monkey for teachers explanations and also for students um, and I want to thank everybody again for joining us today. Thank you for taking the time. And please, if any, any of the questions uh, remained unanswered, then uh, you can always talk to us through the Help Center or by using the chat bot that for some reason I can't see it right now, but it's always on the bottom right hand right here. Uh, there is a chat bot and you can write to our support center. We answer within a day or two maximum. So thank you for joining today. I'm very happy uh, to meet all of you and have a great rest of your day.